Look at verse number 22. This is referring to Simon. Simon was a sorcerer, and he gets saved, and then he starts seeing the apostles performing these miracles, and he wants to do it as well, but obviously not for righteous reasons. He just wants to gain clout, you know, just as the apostles, they're very popular. So he wants that same clout. He wants that popularity. So he's like, how can I get this power? And he expresses this, and then look at verse 22. Repent, therefore, this of this thy wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. Now, here in this particular verse, in verse 22, he's not, Peter's not telling Simon, hey, you need to get saved again. You lost your salvation, you got to repent of your sins. This is after he's been saved. Okay? He says in verse 23, For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Look at verse 24. Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. Now, what is he referring to? He's referring to the gall of bitterness. He's referring to the bond of iniquity. He's like, pray the Lord that I don't become bitter because of this. That I don't get in, in, enwrapped in the bond of iniquity. You say, well, how do you know that this is not referring to salvation? Well, look at verse number 9, if you would. Verse 9. But there are certain men, there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the city was a used sorcery, and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard, because that of a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon also, excuse me, then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. So prior to that whole event taking place, what do we see him doing? Believing. And then being baptized, because that's what Matthew 28 tells people to do. Okay, So thereafter, when he says, repent of this thy wickedness, this is just referring to his Christian life now. Okay, And here's what upsets me, is that when people say, you know, oh, you believe that all you have to do is believe and get saved, and that's it? Yeah, well, why don't we just go murder and rob and rape and pillage? And this is what I think to myself, I'm saved and I've never thought that. <laughs> and I feel like I'm like, is that what you want to do? Because I've never wanted to do something like that. Rob, rape. You know, it's like I got saved, you know, July 22nd, 2007. It's just like, all right, time to go rob a liquor store. <laughs> time to go murder that one dude I never really liked. The thought never even came into my mind, my friends. Such a weird example to give. And there's... Plenty of people in this room, there's plenty of people in churches that believe in the right salvation that have never had that thought ever come into their minds. It's typically the repent of your sins crowd <laughs> that has that thought because they're the ones who came up with the illustration. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh, my friends. And guess what? Out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. Murders, thefts, adulteries. 